Hey guys, it's CDTV Productions here, and before we start this video today, I just want to ask you guys something really quickly, and I will leave a timestamp uh, just below, like here, where you can skip if you just want to get straight into the video, but I would appreciate if you guys watch this if you enjoy my content. Now, recently I just left my YouTube network, which is great, because I felt like they were taking 20% of my money and not really doing anything in return. So my plan was just to get paid through AdSense and keep 100% of the money that I make, obviously after YouTube takes its cut. Now this all sounds great so far, successfully left my network, but the problem is I didn't realize it would take so long for YouTube to review my channel for AdSense. And what that means is currently I have zero monetization across my entire channel. And that could be an issue for several weeks. So yeah, there's the potential that this month I will make zero dollars from YouTube. And that's not going to slow down how often I upload. All it means is I'm asking you guys, I never do this usually, I haven't plugged my Patreon in ages. But at the top of the description, there will be a link to my Patreon. If you guys could go there and support me, even if it's something as small as a dollar, uh, I would really appreciate that because it would help me kind of get through this month. Money isn't the only motivating factor to make videos, but you know, I would appreciate receiving some sort of compensation for the videos that I make, that I spend time making. I would appreciate if you guys could support me there. If there's any type of rewards you would like me to add on my Patreon that would convince you to go support me, I'd appreciate that. It's just if there's any month to support me on Patreon, it's this month, but that's all I'm going to say on the subject, guys. I didn't mean to talk for so long about that, but I just really wanted to explain it and explain <laughs> why I'm plugging my Patreon, because it's something that I don't like to do. I haven't mentioned it in about eight months, so yeah, I just thought now was the right time. So Rich Brian, formerly known as Rich Chigga, just released his debut album, Amen, or his debut project. He's not calling it an album. And I was interested in checking it out, so I did. And the question we are going to be answering about it today is, is it good? Well, this is CDTV Productions, and let's not waste any more time before talking about Amen. I don't wear a lot of hats. Tell my team, take all of my people to the back. I don't need the flex to tell the people where I'm at. Who I'm with, I want to see you later. I think a fitting place to start talking about this album would be the production, as Brian is involved with the production on every single track on here, with the majority of them being solely produced by Rich Brian. And that is something I can always respect. I always really appreciate when rappers handle the majority of their production, as well as the actual rapping. I just think it's something that's pretty impressive, especially because the production throughout most of this thing is fantastic. There's a nice bit of variety too. You have songs like Kitty or Occupied, where they're beats that just go pretty hard, but then on the flip side you have different tracks where it's more mellow and bright production, like Glow Like That and Flight. And speaking of Flight, that has my favourite beat on this album. Th the first time I heard it, I cried. I'll let you figure out if I'm joking there. I'm not. Now I see that everybody start to fuck with me Cause they feelin' like I'm finna go down as a OG Flame low key on the It was so good, man. It was so good. It just hit me right in the heart. I, I cried some manly tears about it. Beautiful beat. Now, Brian does enlist the help of other producers for that song, but that's not a negative because the end result is just amazing. For the most part, the beats are very strong. However, the album does have some weak points in this aspect. Some of the production here does sound a little like it's not fully developed yet, and that is understandable because it's Brian's first project, but it does hold tracks like Cold or Enemies back because, to me, they just don't sound as intricate or as full as the rest of the album's production. I'd also say that the Tyler the Creator influence was a bit too clear on some some tracks. Beats for songs such as Arizona would fit right in on an album like Flower Boy. However, it's not a major issue and I have a huge amount of respect for Brian, considering that most of the beats sound great and he played a part 
in all of them and a major part in most of them. Now moving on to some of the other aspects, and this album, in terms of lyrics, was actually stronger lyrically than I thought it would be. Brian has a pretty interesting and I could, I, you could definitely say fairly unique backstory, and he uses that to his advantage. One of my favourite tracks lyrically though isn't ones where he's talking about his story, it's the song Kitty, which I assume is a fictional story, it might be true, but either way, it's a pretty funny track. It's a comedic storytelling type track that has very kind of Lil Dicky-ish vibes to it. It sounds exactly like something Lil Dicky would make, but the story is personalised to Rich Brian. You know, there's a lot of references to him being young, you know, it's about his first time having sex. It's a pretty funny story. Now, it doesn't have a lot of twists. There's like one twist at the end, so it's not a super intricate story. But it was still very funny, and we got to see his humour throughout it, and I do like when Rich Brian shows his humour aside, because that is a big part of him. A lot of you will know he's a pretty funny guy, so it is good to see that come through in his music, without coming off as too corny or goofy. Now the album does have lines at points that really aren't good, there are some awful lines on here, and some that do come off as filler just to, you know, get to the next uh, sequence of bars. And there are a couple of points where he mentions the same subject a bit too much. But for the most part, Brian is saying something valuable and is flowing like crazy when he does it. Seriously, he flows so damn well on some of these tracks, and I think the fact that English isn't his first language makes that even more impressive. I sure as hell know that I wouldn't be able to rap in Indonesian, whilst using things like wordplay and flowing well. It's one thing learning another language, but then being able to understand how to use lyrical techniques in that language, I just think it's pretty crazy. A couple other things I enjoyed were the album's length. I think it was perfect in that aspect, not too long, but just long enough to feel satisfying. That's what she said. And I do like that he's a bit more creative with his vocals than a lot of rappers, switching between his deep monotone rapping voice, then these different kind of vocal melodies and harmonies. It's pretty fun to listen to. However, I'm just gonna end this off with a couple of nitpicks that I do have. One of them is that whilst for the most part I do enjoy the harmonies that he uses on here, on a couple of tracks, they just sound a little off key, and he would have benefited from singing them differently, or maybe getting a feature to sing them. For example, whilst I love the track Occupied, there's just something about the harmony on there that doesn't sound right. I feel the same with the first half of the hook on See Me. The melody that he sings just doesn't sound like it matches the beat to me. See me run, see me run. Run into my lungs, my gift. Run it for the fun, I feel like you saying in this bitch. Also, another very small thing that I was kind of underwhelmed by is that I was expecting to enjoy the tracks with Joji and Offset a lot more than I did. In the end, I just thought those tracks were decent. Apart from that though, we have a very strong debut project from Rich Brian. I'm gonna give Amen by Rich Brian an 8.1 out of 10. I think this is very good for a debut. There are just some points in the album where you can tell that it's a debut. Parts of it still don't sound fully fleshed out, and there's a lot of areas that he could improve in, but I could definitely see him growing into being one of the most unique artists out right now. He already has a very unique backstory, and, you know, I guess he even has a unique uh, place in hip-hop, as this album made him the first Asian rapper to have an album that went number one in the rap and hip hop charts, and that is incredibly impressive. Yeah, there's just a lot of tracks that I'm gonna be replaying from this. Now, tomorrow I am gonna upload a video on my favorite tracks from this album, just so I can talk about the ones that I did like individually in a bit more depth. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that, but that's what I think of this album. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. 8.1 out of 10 is my score for this really enjoyed it. Just gonna be listening to this a lot in the future. Like I said, please subscribe if you want to see that video tomorrow, where I'll be talking about the best songs, in my opinion, from this album. Also remember that the link to my Patreon will be at the very top of the description, just because I could really do with the support this month, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys all in the next one. And this is CDTV Productions, signing out.